let's look at the Eurocentric colonial perspective of sub-Saharan or West African history and see if it makes sense. So here's North Africa. These are the indigenous people or the Amasek. They are classified as a white race by Europeans and all the great historical accomplishments are attributed to these people who are very, very close to the Mediterranean Sea. And what about the melanated Berbers and the Tuaregs? Oh, they are, uh, they are uh, descendants of slaves. Let's, uh, let's say that they are descendants of slaves because they have too much DNA relating to the so-called sub-Saharan Africa. All right, that's, that's the narrative. And then there is this great dividing line in the middle of the Sahara Desert known as sub-Saharan. That is a term that was coined by the Americans in the late 1970s. So a Chinese wall in the Saharan Desert uh, that no, nobody has seen this wall, but no tribe in West Africa can definitely not ever have passed this imaginary Chinese wall that they call sub-Sahara. And then all of a sudden there are plenty of tribes in in this sub-Saharan Africa who just are there and have popped up there and they learned Islam from... Islam just popped up there. And what about the Fulas? Ah, goddamn, what, what are we going to do with the Fulas? They are everywhere, right? They are in the sub-Saharan Africa and stretching all the way to sort of Ethiopia and Somalia and all over Sahel. What are we going to do about the Fulas? Ah, uh, they are Hamites. Oh, no, they are not Hamites. They are Niger Congo, says Joseph Greenberg a uh, linguist who didn't speak a single word of Fula and Ser and said that the languages are related, but they are very, very, very different languages. Uh, maybe there are maybe some Fula dialects that are similar, but yeah, so, so this is sort of the uh, colonial narrative. Uh, my question is, I'm not telling you what to believe. I'm just suggesting to you that could it be a little bit more simple than that? In ancient times, in the Sahara, you would have nomadic tribes. These would be called the Berbers or the Moors by Europeans who may have seen one of the many nomadic tribes. And then in the green areas of West Africa, you would have agricultural tribes. You see, cattle cannot live in the jungle areas of West Africa because cattle, like cows and camels, would be killed by lions and leopards and other uh, animals that live in the savanna jungle area. And due to the history, as Immigrations have come from Europe to North Africa, invasions from the Greeks, the Turks, the Romans, the Arabs, etc., etc. This has led to a downward southern migration of nomadic tribes southward, so that these nomads in the north have started coming to the borders of West Africa and establishing kingdoms there, such as Tekrur and, you know, Mali, Songhai, etc., with Islam that they may have carried from the north. And these nomadic tribes and agricultural tribes have traded for thousands and thousands of years because there is no imaginary sub-Saharan line. Could it be? Could it be this simple? 